Hello, everyone, and welcome back. It's Peter Tragos, the lawyer you know here to talk about Kyle Rittenhouse case, closing arguments. They're still going on right now. I think defense is finishing um, soon, and then the prosecutor will get back up and will be allowed time for what we call rebuttal. Um, and that's where he gets to respond to what the defense argued. And the reason the prosecutor gets to go first and last, in case you don't know, in criminal law is because they have the burden beyond a reasonable doubt, the highest burden in the country. And I apologize for the timing and the late start today. We've got a lot going on and we've got a lot going on this week. Um, Pete and I are going to be in trial for the next couple days. So I wanted to get on here um, before the end of the day today. We're going to be here late working on that anyway and give a little recap of the closing, answer some questions. Um, I had a lot of questions about the jury instructions too, which took most of the day on Friday. Then they had more arguments today before count six, the gun charge, which was dismissed. I had friends texting me, is the jury supposed to remember this? What is the point of reading 30 minutes worth of words and instructions to a jury? They're going to totally forget everything the judge read. The prosecutor, Mr. Binger, also had the same concern because he started his opening with, don't worry, we're going to give you these to take back with you. You can review any of them that you want to. So that's all important. Now, quick programming note before we dive into closings, and that is we are so close to 20K, 20,000 subscribers. We expect to hit it this week. I hope to hit it during this video. And if we do hit it, uh, give it, hit it this video, we will give away a shirt to somebody in the chat and somebody watching this video. Um, and so that'll be fun. So hopefully if you're not subscribed right now, please go hit the subscribe button so we can get to 20K and beyond um, and hit that goal. That would be fun to do. So when talking about the closings, now most of you probably watched all or part of the closings. Not a lot of it was surprising. They pretty much argue exactly what we would expect them to argue as we've gone throughout the case. Prosecutor argued, Kyle wanted it. He shouldn't have been there. 17-year-olds um, walking around with AR-15. This is exactly what happens. This is why they shouldn't do stuff like this. It's very weird to think that they can't really argue that he was breaking the law having the gun anymore, even though they kind of have been throughout the case. And additionally, they made a comment about him breaking curfew, which the defense objected to, because that count was also thrown out. So it's very strange, some of the stuff where the common sense argument has been he shouldn't have even been there and he shouldn't have been a gun or shouldn't have had a gun. Those two things are illegal. Therefore, everything that followed is illegal. Well, those are gone now. So the fact that he was there is no longer illegal. And the fact that he had a gun was no longer illegal. So once you lose those two and the judge didn't tell him that the charge was dismissed, he just said that's not something that's up for your consideration anymore. So to me, that was very, very interesting. Um, and as the prosecutor did throughout the case, he wrapped in his life is more important than property theme. Um, as he talked through the reckless endangerment of uh, McGinnis, I actually started to think that might be the strongest case for the prosecution because he wasn't in fear of bodily harm from McGinnis, yet still endangered him with the bullet. But he has to be acting, he being Kyle Rittenhouse, has to be acting unreasonably reckless or dangerous in causing that endangerment, and if he was acting in self-defense, then potentially it was not reckless behavior, unreasonable behavior. But that one, I think he did a good job of explaining why potentially he could be guilty of that, and then even if he's not guilty of the other ones. Um, some of the other highlights from the prosecutor, many people were worried about an active shooter. What did they do? They went and got a concealed carry permit to have a weapon to protect themselves. The defendant didn't do that, obviously, but a couple of the prosecutor's arguments, I felt like he was um, saying things like, yeah, that's what Kyle Rittenhouse did. Like people were scared, so they went and got a gun. That's what Kyle Rittenhouse did. People went out and actually wanted to help. That's what Kyle Rittenhouse said that he did. That's been his testimony. That's what he did. He got the gun for his protection and he was there to help people. So again, not, not my favorite arguments from the prosecutor, but I had some people text me. They thought he was convincing. So let me know. In the chat, did you think Binger was convincing in his closing argument? Um, he contrasted Huber and Kyle Rittenhouse. One of them was really an EMT. The other was a liar. And if he lied about that, he's probably lying about everything, which is common for prosecutors to say. Again, he talked about murdering two unarmed men um, and seriously wounding another man. But he doesn't say that the other man was unarmed. So it was kind of a wordsmithing there, a lawyer, lawyerly way to say that, which I thought was interesting. 
Um, Dan talked about how he lied over and over again, how he's not defending arson and looting. He's actually prosecuting some of those cases, including, um, I think, Zeminsky. Is it Zeminsky that he's prosecuting? I think he's prosecuting Zeminsky, who was there with Rosenbaum, who didn't testify, but he's being prosecuted for arson or something like that, which which I think was interesting. Um, and let's see. If defendant provokes, he loses the right to self-defense. I thought that was a pretty good argument, convincing argument by Binger. Um, let's see here. What else we got? Oh, the whole red herring about um, Rosenbaum threatening Rittenhouse's life and the life of others, um, how it was nowhere on the videos. That was convincing to me. Rittenhouse testified to it. Balch testified to it. Some people testified to it, but it, was on, it wasn't on any of the recordings. And as we know with technology and all the video footage we've seen in this case, there were tons of recordings. There was tons of vantage points and we could hear almost everything that was said and done and seen everything that was said and done that night. We didn't see or hear that specific threat from Rosenbaum, which is really important, um, which is really important to the self-defense charges. Uh, let's see. Oh, one thing I thought was super weird by Vinger, and you correct me if I'm wrong. I always try to be cognizant of a filter when I'm trying cases not to say anything that could be taken as like, ooh, why did he say it like that? Um, say what you want about Rosenbaum. He's still deceased as a result of these actions. And Binger described him as a mouthy little guy, a little dog that barks. Did not think that that was a great, um, I think he could have just said, you know, he may was more bark than bite or he was a smaller statured gentleman or something like that rather than a mouthy little guy little dog that barks but i understand what he was trying to do he was trying to say he was mouthing off to all these people nobody else felt the need to shoot him except for kyle rittenhouse kyle rittenhouse overreacted you could have just shoved him like the guy in the yellow shirt did you didn't have to shoot him kyle, oh i thought a good argument from banger was kyle rittenhouse brought in the ar-15 he knew that the only response he was going to have was a deadly one so he came and he was going to respond with any threat to deadly force, whether or not it was justified. And this was not justified yet. He responded in deadly force. I thought that was a good explanation. Losing my voice, which is not great when I'm starting to try. Um, the defense, they brought a tape measure and they said they were going to measure the barrel of the gun, but they don't have to do that anymore, intimating that went away. Um, so he measured four feet away, see how close it was if somebody's lunging at your gun, et cetera. Um, he talked about how they didn't have to call certain expert witnesses because the other witnesses told the truth. They didn't have to call any witnesses, but they did because they wanted you to show the truth. They went through all the things we expected them to go through, that the alleged victims were the aggressors. They came after Kyle Rittenhouse. Kyle Rittenhouse responded appropriately. He pointed his gun at the ground. He didn't shoot anybody when their hands were up, only when they were pulling a um, gun on him and, and coming towards him. And he thinks that if Rosenbaum would have got the gun, he would have killed other people. All the stuff we pretty much would have expected and did expect throughout. I did not hear him talk about how Gage um, discussed Kyle Rittenhouse being in danger of head trauma. That's what I was expecting to hear. It's going on right now and they still could. So you can let me know if I missed that. Um, but that's kind of a quick recap of what's happened so far in closing arguments. I may or may not do another video on that. I don't know when the verdict's gonna come down, probably while I'm in trial. So I might not have an immediate reaction to the verdict, but we will do a video after the verdict comes down so we can all discuss it together on our channel and see if you potential jurors out there um, feel like the jury got it right. We'll see if I feel like the jury got it right. I So I had people saying, oh, I wasn't shocked at all when the gun charges were, were dropped. I was. I didn't think the judge would make that call no matter what you think of the judge, if you think he's biased or whatever. I didn't think he would make that call, but I think what the prosecutor said made him make that call. Um, all right, so if you have any questions at all about this trial or anything else, get in the chat now, post your question. I'm going to start at the top and go through and answer as many as I get to. I usually can't get to all of them when we talk about Kyle Rittenhouse because there's so many questions, but I love getting to as many as I can. So please put in whatever questions and comments you have about whether or not you think Binger or the defense lawyer was convincing in their closing arguments, which way you're leaning, what you think they're going to, is going to happen, and what you think about the judge dismissing counts six and seven. And again, if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. I'll check on my phone, see if it updates to hit us over um, 20K as we're sitting here. If it does hit 20K and any of you want to let me know, then go ahead and let me know. I just checked. We're still at 19.9, which means I don't know if you have liked the video and subscribed. All right. Let's see here. 
Hello from Texas, Julie, Pollyanna, thank you. Okay, Jonathan Rett, I'm wondering what impact the decision in this case could have on other self-defense cases. Has, the, has all the video evidence helped or hurt future cases? I think the, the video evidence always helps because it gives us more objective evidence. So I think whatever, however this comes down, it is gonna be a precedent that if we have video showing these types of actions were taken, what does that mean for self-defense? And one of the things the defense lawyer is arguing in, in closing is he did run away. He did try to get away. He wasn't an active shooter just shooting people up. He gave away his body armor. If he was gonna be an active shooter, he would have kept his body armor. So I think two things. I think if it's not guilty, I think it will continue a line of self-defense cases. I think if it's guilty, it will set kind of a new precedent that you need more than just violence and someone else having a gun potentially pointed at you for a self-defense defense to be successful. I also think the defense attorney said something like this case is so political. I think no matter which way it comes out, the other side is going to argue this is a political statement. So we'll see if that is something that um, comes from this decision. Good afternoon, Diane. Hi, all, Wine30. Hello, Alana. Glad you could join us in from Down Under. Quote of the closing, this is a political case. Indeed it is. Hit the like button. Thank you. Everything is photogenic. Thank you, Seb, for coming on. All right, Caitlin Clary. Did the gun charge get dropped because the prosecution did not prove it or because no law was broken? That's an interesting question. The gun charge got dropped from my estimation for two reasons. Number one, the prosecution did not put on the appropriate evidence to fit him into the statute that they charged him with. And number two, it was because of an exception built into, I think, par subparagraph C to that um, statute, which was something like, if you're under the age of 12, then you can't have what Kyle Rittenhouse had. But if you're a minor, you can't have a sawed off shotgun or a short shotgun and a short barrel shotgun. And the judge was gonna let the jury measure out the rifle to see if it was a short barrel shotgun type of weapon. And the prosecutor admitted in open court, it's not judge, we stipulate it's not a short barrel shotgun. And the judge said, well, if that's the case, then it's dismissed. So the judge found that it fits in that exception. And the standard is that there's no evidence or no reasonable jury could find the defendant guilty of this charge if, it's insufficient on the evidence that was given to them and the testimony that was given to them. So the judge felt that based on the evidence that was provided by the prosecution, no reasonable jury could find the defendant guilty. Therefore, the judge has to throw it out um, or else it would be a miscarriage of justice to convict the defendant of count six. That's what the judge found. Jennifer, thank you for joining us. Seb from England. Awesome. More Australians. That's great. I am Ming. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Ray Ann Moldenhauer, did the judge think saying you could get away with murder was a good idea? I did not hear that. Not a good idea in a murder trial. All right, it's wine 30. Since the prosecution has been a train wreck, is there any op or is there an option for the state to refile at a later date, citing the prosecutor is not mentally is suffering a breakdown? No, usually not. And he hasn't been that bad. I mean, listen, we've talked some about Banger on this channel. Other channels have roasted him. I know. I think he's made some mistakes, some strategical errors, not how I would do it. It seems like his personality is a little smug for this case or the way he's handling this case. But he hasn't been incompetent by any means. In my estimation, as somebody who used to prosecute cases and defend cases, I don't think he's been a train wreck, as you said, but that's, if you're a potential juror and you're watching this case and you think the prosecutor's a train wreck, that is not a good sign for the prosecution in this case. See, uh, Rika B thinks Binger was convincing. And I do think some of his arguments were convincing. This is where a lawyer gets to argue uninterrupted. And if they can't be convincing in closing, then they can never be in, uh, convincing. Everything is photogenic. Good point. Binger said Kyle was lying to, save, lying to save his own skin. Doesn't that infer self-defense? 
one could argue that yes, if you're lying in order to protect yourself, that that makes you a liar and everything you say is, is, is a lie or you're doing things necessary to protect yourself. And I think that's up to the jury to decide. New Chris, I just ex uh, explained this. So if you have more questions after my explanation, let me know. Philip Bender, Binger was not convincing and not truthful. He doesn't want what's fair. He's an activist. I don't know about that, but. Is the defense allowed to comment on the dismissed charge? So yes, they can comment on it. And there's a few reasons. This is what I said in one of my previous videos. These charges have already been read to the jury. So they know that the curfew charge and the gun charge are now gone and not going back to them. Now, theoretically, the judge could have granted a directed verdict and the defendant could have already been convicted outside the presence of the jury of those charges. Therefore, they wouldn't need to go back. But the defense can say things like they said, you no longer need to measure the barrel of this. There's no longer a gun charge for you to consider because those are all true things. So it's wine 30. Yes, the defense has that ability. The prosecution does not because of double jeopardy. They can't try him again for the same charges if he's found not guilty. Jesse Gomes. I think he shouldn't have been there. Argument is a bad one. It's the same thing as saying she shouldn't have worn that outfit in a rape case. I think he's playing to the fact that a lot of these jurors are locals or all these jurors are locals and maybe they won't like that. Um, that he came in. I also think the most damning thing about this case is a 17 year old kid coming there with a gun, knowing that it's a dangerous situation. And to me, I'm like, why would he do that? Doesn't seem like a great idea. It seems like an actually really foolish idea, but not a crime. The crime still has to occur when the shooting happened. Was it murder? The fact that he made bad decisions to come there does not make it murder in my opinion. Uh, Marlene Barone, do you think the jury will ask to have the video go back? Yes, I do. Thank you, Alana. I will do that tonight. I will also try not to scream. I have that tendency. So Cassandra Stokes, what did the prosecutor say? The prosecutor said they stipulate it is not a short barrel shotgun, which then, based on what the judge said, made um, Kyle Rittenhouse fit into an exception to that statute. They didn't put on evidence that he meets the criteria outside of that exception. Therefore, it needed to be a short barrel shotgun type of gun in order to convict him in the judge's estimation. And when the state stipulated that it was not, he found there was no evidence and had to dismiss it. Uh, Valhalla 188, I've explained six a couple times, but count seven um, the defense and the judge both said that there was no evidence that he violated um, the curfew. One officer said there was a curfew, but when the, when the state rested their case in chief, meaning they were done putting on evidence, the defense made the motion to dismiss, and it was dismissed. JOA, a judgment of acquittal is what it's called, theoretically. So this is a great question. Luby Lou online. How long do you think the jury will take given the evidence? Do you think it'll be super quick or more drawn out? I hope it's drawn out. And I don't mean that to say like, I hope they delay for no reason, but I hope they go through the video a couple times. I hope they look at the pictures. I hope they read through the charges. I hope they read the explanation of self-defense. I hope they read through the credibility of witnesses um, jury instruction. I really hope they take their time reading through everything and reviewing everything because that will be very important. All right, we have a super chat question. Oops. All right, new Chris, the usual man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for doing this again. Prior to closing arguments, eight jurors offered to start to deliberate tonight. Does that mean some have made up their minds already? Not likely. What it means is they want to get this started so it can be done. They don't want to waste time. They, I mean, they. this week is basically when it's for sure going to be done, probably in the next day or two, I would guess. 
probably tomorrow would be reasonable by the end of the day tomorrow. So if they can start tonight, they can get some of it out of the way. That's what that means. Um, and new Chris, since you did a super chat question, let me check here, see if we're at 20 K. And if we are, you will get the free shirt. Nope. We're still at 19.9. So go subscribe, get us a 20 K so we can give away a shirt today. All right. Hello. Chill out. Watching from Tampa. It's awesome. I will be in Tampa most of the week. Let's see. Gene Hoods thought the prosecutor's argument was very good. Leprechaun Tar. This is great. I want to put it up here, and I think everybody should buy into this. I will accept any decision made by the jury, even if I disagree. I believe that the judicial process was followed, and I respect that. I agree. LHJP, thank you. Django, I think the prosecutor knocked it out of the park with closing. I don't think uh, Binger was too bad during the trial, except the Fifth Amendment statement. I agree. That was, I agree with you. Great pickup. I think that was the worst one because you just can't do that stuff. The judge kept diminishing the prosecution argument to make him look bad, protecting Kyle. I saw some other comments about that. What's the jury going to think? For the most part, the jury was outside the presence of the courtroom during most of those. Um, all right, another super chat question from new Chris. The mother is so confident in her son's acquittal that she said in an interview on national TV that given the opportunity, he would do it all over again. I did not see that, but I will check again, see if we're at 20K. We are not, still not at 20K yet. Um, I did not see that. So I would have to see that article to believe it. Um, I would be shocked if he would choose to do it all over again. Ha, <laughs> that's okay, Marlene. You can always correct them. Rob E., how does the defendant doing something stupid, going there with an AR-15, play into anything? Is it just to get the jury to decide how they want to use that? Yes, it's a factor the jury can determine. It also goes into his mindset, his motive, and whether or not it was really self-defense and reasonable self-defense, or whether he was a vigilante looking to shoot someone and took advantage of the first chance he got. And I think it plays into that. And the, the prosecutors are trying to argue that he went there looking for trouble and the first chance he got, he shot someone. Now, I think the defense has a lot of the video that other things were said and thrown at and done to the defendant where he didn't respond like that, that they can use that that's not actually true. But I think that's the point. And I think, I don't want to say most of America, because I don't know what most of America does with anything today. But I think a lot of America, because a lot of America didn't go there with an AR-15, right? I can at least say that. Most of America was not there with an AR-15. I think most of America would agree that's not a wise decision to go protect somebody else's car dealership. Now, that's not murder, but I think it's not a wise decision personally. Do his bad uh, doctor disillusion, do his bad decisions make it manslaughter? No, not if it was self-defense. Daniel Bicina, I am not sure they made that distinction. I think they all kind of agreed that it was a short barrel gun that was in that exception, and he, his was not a short barrel gun of any kind. But I could be wrong with that. So Gene Hood, currently I think he's guilty, but would want to review more evidence if I was a juror. I think it's okay for a juror at this point to think they know which way they would vote. But just like you said, they need to go review all the evidence and see if that confirms it and then, you know, vote and discuss it with the other jurors. If a verdict comes back quickly, which side do you think it will favor? Usually quick verdicts are guilty. But in this case, I, I might lean the other way if it's quick. Can the charges that have already been dropped come back at a civil lawsuit? They're not civil statutes, they're criminal statutes, so no. Um, and they can't be retried against criminally. Max Frost, hey, finally made it. Good, man. Glad you're here. SD, do you think the jury will vote based on the evidence or is it the trial too political? Are they going to vote on political bias? This is the biggest fear of everyone or should be the biggest fear of everyone. No matter what the jury's politics are, you do not want them voting on their politics. 
So we all have to hope they're going to vote on the evidence, whatever they think that is. And as long as that's what they're voting on, like somebody else commented, that's cool with me and I'll respect it. Hunter Davilek, is it normal for a judge to throw charges before deliberation? I understand as to why, just not seen it before. Yes, it actually is normal if there's not evidence we've had jury, especially when there's a multi-count complaint like this. I have seen judges throw out charges before. I've even had a, a judge throw out the main charge of the trial. The trial is over. I'm judge, JOA, judgment of acquittal. All right. So we have a Django super chat. I'm going to check to see if we're at 20K yet. We are not. Super chats are getting priority on the t-shirt. Um, prosecutor said there was no self-defense since he raised his gun first. From all you've observed, is that accurate? Raised his gun. So yes, there were parts throughout the video I think he raised his gun before anyone else did or without anybody raising a gun because they didn't have a gun like Rosenbaum. But that does not mean it's not self-defense under the law. Because you raise your gun first does not make it murder. It does not eliminate self-defense. That's inaccurate. I don't think he said it specifically like that. I think he was saying that he raised his gun, creating the problem, shooting um, uh, or pointing a gun at somebody, even if you don't shoot it, can start or entice or enhance or create the problem and incite the violence. If he's making that argument, then it's up for the jury to decide. Another super chat here, new Chris. She says it on Fox News. I'll have to go check it out. Checking again. I don't understand. I thought we were like 20 subscribers away from 20K, and yet here we are, still not there yet. Um, all right, let's see what else we have. JoJo, do you find it frustrating that the media is stating things that never mentioned in trial or that I've never seen proof of? I feel like such a fool. Yes, it's frustrating. It's also frustrating when they describe an entire person's testimony and leave out parts of it that are important. The media's coverage of this has been crazy, in my opinion. I just, chat just jumped, but a couple people were saying it's frightening how people are calling him, yeah, um, a hero. Yeah, we don't need Batman. You know, we don't need vigilantes in the streets. We don't need rioting and arson and stuff, you know, but I mean, that's why we have law enforcement officers. And yeah, I agree. If you want to protect your own house and family, somebody comes towards that. I feel differently probably than some of my UK friends, but, but I, I agree. I don't think we should, you know, be arming our 17 year olds to go into chaotic situations. Django, do you think the prosecutor closed stronger than he prosecuted? I think most of the time closing feels stronger because the rules are a lot more lax and you have a lot more leeway to infer things that I object a lot. In the only objection I really do in closing is facts, not in evidence. I don't let the other lawyer make intimations or arguments of facts that are just, they didn't come out. And I'll object. And if the judge overrules, that's fine. But I want the jury to think, did that fact actually come out? Because if it didn't, I want them to know that. Leprechaun, I think Binger was good in closing. However, I don't think the high burden of beyond a reasonable doubt has been met. Honestly, no, no verdict yet. Do I think that the points raised in the video enhancements are going to create a problem in forensics? I don't. I really don't. Why, JT Gard Gardner, if information was brought up in trial, it can be interpreted in closing. It sucks, but it's the law. Why do you think that sucks? Why don't you think that the evidence testimony that came out in trial should be able to be argued in closing? Justin Schwartz from Canada. USA case of self-defense are interesting, especially from an outsider. It is. It is interesting. Again, how long do I estimate? I would say... If they start tonight, they'll be done by the end of the day tomorrow. That's my guess. So Penelope, she was on Hannity saying he would do it over again. It's just, I don't know why people do stuff like that personally, but. Okay. 
Felix, can voters get ADA Binger fired? Not really, unless they vote out, I guess, his boss, who's the DA. Um, then theoretically, then he could lose his job, but not directly. I do think there's a chance for a hung jury. If there is a hung jury, that will be the time I would feel most confident that politics came into play. And two people on two different sides, buttheads, dug in and refused to try to look at the evidence and make a decision. That's just one guy's take. What do you think the weakest points of the defense's case? Um, the fact that he had a gun, but he was there for medical treatment and just to help people and had not just any gun, but an AR-15 makes him look like a vigilante, um, I think is the, is the, I'll just say the prosecution's strongest point is, why did he come? He got exactly what he was looking for. That's, I think, the strongest part of the prosecution's case, even though I think there are issues with that as well. UVA double Wahoo, if you were on the jury, how would you vote in this case? Let's save that till the end of this video. I will give you where I would vote right now at the end of this video. Southern Sass, thank you. So yes, the um, lesser included were brought for the jury and they can make that determination. So it's wine 30, if he's guilty on any charge, the jury recommend the sentence or is it up to the judge? It is up to the judge. T. Welch, what about ethics charges against the prosecutor? Theoretically, that could happen. Um, one of the lawyers could report him, the judge could report him. I wouldn't expect that to happen, though. So Alana, if not guilty in this case, could anything from this case be used in a future case against him if he did go on to do it again? So sometimes you can use other bad acts against a defendant, um, even if they're not guilty of a crime in those other bad acts. So theoretically, they might be able to. Hank Hammer. Um, if there's a hung jury, will the state go ahead with a new trial? Will, there, will the judge change? Potentially. Doesn't have to. It can be the same judge. It can get kicked to another judge. Judge could retire, whatever it may be. It's wine 30. If not guilty, do you think Gage's case will proceed and or be successful? I think it will proceed whether or not it's a guilty um, uh, verdict. And I think it'll settle. I do not think that case will go to trial. Can the judge set aside a decision by the jury and why would he do so? Usually only if there's real misconduct or fraud. Very unlikely. Dr. Disillusion, do you think Kyle saying that if Rosenbaum would have taken his gun, he would have killed other, him and other people will have an effect on the way his motives are seen? That's the purpose of him taking the stand. Some people didn't agree with it, said they don't think he should have taken the stand. But that's the point. He had to tell the jury what mindset he was in because that's how they determine whether or not it's self-defense. And he's trying to explain to them, I thought he was going to take the gun, kill me and others. That's why I shot. That's, that's how you develop self-defense defense. So Melanie Crosby thinks it's going to be a hung jury. Andrew Judge, what are the requirements for proving recklessly endangering safety? I don't have the actual jury instruction or statute right in front of me, but from what I remember reading it, 
on the very first video did I, on, I did on the Rittenhouse case, it is acting with reckless disregard of human life, doing an inherently reckless or dangerous activity without caring about who's around and who it may affect. So shooting a rifle like that with bullets like that, while there are all sorts of people around, even if you don't hit them, you're recklessly endangering them. So Pedro Ruel, if, it's, if he's found guilty, is it likely to be a mistrial? If he's found guilty, it's too late for a mistrial. They'd have to appeal it. No, Jesse, he can't then have a mistrial or directed verdict or JOA or anything at that point once the jury comes back with their verdict. Leprechaun Tar, great question. If you stuck 12 lawyers in a jury, would they be able to go through the instructions much, much faster because of their knowledge of the law or would they be slower because that knowledge bogs them down? Great question. They would be able to go through much faster their first time through. But what would take much longer is them arguing about specific words, phrases, and definitions, and the purpose of them being where they are in the jury instructions and in the statute would take far longer, in my opinion. So it's 1.30. I kind of did too. I found the defense's um, closing to be quite repetitive. I thought the defense did a better job throughout the trial. So that's why they, they developed their case, I think, well throughout the trial, which is why I think the closing was less repetitive. I also think their opening was a lot more expansive than um, the state, which is why the states didn't feel as... Um, why the state didn't feel as repetitive and the state did feel, or the defense did feel um, a, a little more repetitive. Um, but you want to, it's hard as a defense lawyer because you want to hit everything. You want to make sure that you get everything in front of them that you think is important and that could have an effect on their decision. I haven't seen whether the judges ruled on their um, mistrial with prejudice, um, but once the jury's deliberating and they come back with their verdict that he can't he can't uh call a mistrial 12 lawyers and a jury sounds like hell It'll, it would literally never happen thank you navi it's been fun for me too and i like getting all your questions and all of your input okay so wild bill thought the defense was outstanding in closing much better than during trial uh lucky if Kyle walks, will he be able to own firearms again or maybe some limitations? I think he would be able to own firearms again. All of his rights are restored. Thank you, Paul K. So super duperties. Does Rittenhouse have a case of defamation? Not likely. Not likely. You have to prove usually that it's knowingly false what people are saying about you. The fact that a state attorney took it this far means there was a reasonable basis for people to say the things about him that they did. I mean, unless you're talking about like media commentators calling him a scumbag and stuff, but that's not usually, they have a first amendment, right? Usually that's not to the level of standard. Okay, just because the defense is given two and a half hours doesn't mean they have to use it. You guys have to realize, okay? It's easy to sit back and talk about how trial lawyers do this though. There's a lot of pressure and anxiety and stress that goes into trying a case. And when you have two and a half hours to explain uninterrupted how you think this case goes and what you think the evidence shows, you take it and you try to grab hold of that jury and say, listen, this is what happened. This is what the video shows because they're not allowed to do that throughout the trial. It's other people explaining what they're seeing in the video. So give them a little grace when it comes to whether or not you think they did a good job or bad job, if it was a little repetitive, if it was too long. Now we do talk about it and we don't wanna bore the jury. We don't wanna take too long. We don't wanna be unnecessary, but we do wanna make sure we hit everything that is important. Carson Drake, yes. Can the party strike a plea deal while the jury is deliberating? Absolutely they can.
Very interesting here. Uh, Luby Lou online. I'm a UK resident, so US law fascinates me. Would there have been alternate would there have been alternate jurors on this case? Yes, there were. And do they get to sit in on deliberations or are they excused if not needed? This is the worst part. After you're done and they send the jury out, you just kind of hang your head when the judge says, hey, all eight of you guys that sat through this whole trial, see you later. Thanks for your service. Because I feel bad. You know, they dedicated their time. They did their civic duty. And now they get to go home. They don't get to hear the deliberations. They don't get to take part in the outcome, put their vote talk about what they think the evidence shows. So it's kind of sad at that point. But yes, they're absolutely necessary because as we've seen in this case, in the Theranos trial, lots of juries end up, or jurors end up getting excused or leaving for one reason or another. And we have to have a full jury to have the verdict. All right, we got another super chat. Congrats on 20K today. Let's go see here. Hitting the update. A uh, great milestone, well-deserved. I think YouTube is lagging. Might be there on studio already. Thanks for the streams. My YouTube must be lagging because I'm looking at it. I don't have the studio on my phone, but I will put your name in the hat as well. All the super chats are going in the hat and we're going to pick out one of those names to send a uh, t-shirt to. Thank you, Dr. Disillusion, for coming on. So Paul Kay, as I think mentioned a couple of times, he was an active shooter after the first death. Trying to disarm was imperative. There are definitions of active shooters, and I'm not sure he fell into that definition personally. But you can disagree. And again, that could be something the jury says is maybe the first one was self-defense, but not afterwards because he was an active shooter and they should come try to stop him. That's something the jury could say. Yeah, Chris Tove. Um it seemed like the prosecutor's misconduct earlier gave the defense some ammo to unload the prosecutor in their closing, and it felt justified. They did take some pot shots at the prosecutor. They did during their closing. Harry McNamara, I agree with you. Disregard what just random media outlets were saying about legal cases. If I were a prosecutor and ends in a hung jury, I would request a new judge. So would I. Uh, Martin, the judge set the pace in the defense's favor when he dismissed the charges. I think he might have done it before that. It's a great point. I don't think they do. They do have like victims advocates that maybe would talk to jurors if they needed the mental health support. I don't think there is, but that's a really good idea. It's just state funds. You know, that's, that's always what's hard about this stuff. Lundine Brown, what happened with the case? Closing arguments are just finishing up. It might go to the jury tonight at the latest tomorrow. So Joe Molkahai, how do you feel defense's closing argument seemed all over the place? Uh, somebody else said repetitive. I agree that it didn't have great flow. Some people said he did an awesome job. As a defense attorney, sometimes you have to decide, are you going to prepare a closing and have a flow to it, a beginning, middle, and end? Or are you going to respond to what the prosecutor says and does? And then sometimes it seems a little all over the place and choppy, but you're hitting the highlights and the key points. That's what he seemed like he wanted to do. I like to have a prepared outline to go um, structurally through it, then at the end or during that beginning, middle, and end, weave in my responses to what the prosecutor said. To me, the prosecutor didn't say anything surprising. So this could have all been prepared ahead of time. Not to say that he didn't do that. I think he's very prepared. And that's why he has so much to say. So JT Gardner, not necessarily, would it have been better for him to say, I'm stopping the threats coming at me than I was in fear for my life? Not necessarily the way the self-defense statutes are written. Um, he has to be fear in fear for his life to use life-threatening, deadly force in response.
So Robbie, the worst thing the judge did was applaud the defense witness before he took the stand. That was on Veterans Day. The defense witness was a veteran. I don't think the judge knew that the defense witness was the only veteran in the courtroom. I also don't think this happened in the presence of the jury. Correct me if I'm wrong. Keevan Kraft, outlines are a good idea. I agree. Is it hard to keep a jury from experiencing protests and crowds outside the court? No, usually they can get them out of there undetected, uh, which is why their identities should hopefully not be put out. I heard some rumblings that it was already out on Twitter, which I hope is not true. Um, I hope they can get out of there without anybody knowing they were ever there. Is Chris Rogers another defamation question, question? He might. I don't think it would be wise personally. When he was at the police car, should he have laid down in his hands behind his head, rifle away, and explained why it was just such chaos? That's the problem with hindsight and looking back. And he was getting pepper sprayed. And I mean, I don't, I don't know. Again, that's not really something for the jury to decide. I don't think. In your experience, has the judge gone against the norm? Not too much. Usually you don't have this defense friendly of judges. Usually they're very prosecutor heavy. I've seen judges way more in favor of a prosecutor than this judge was for the defense. Trust me. All right, getting close to the end here. Um, I'm going to check one more time. Facebook has, a, I mean, uh, YouTube is lagging, I'm told. See if we hit 20K. It still is not showing 20K. So if you haven't subscribed, please go subscribe to our channel. Get us to 20K. We had a bunch of super chat questions, so we will throw them all in a hat to pull out a free shirt. We'll give away more free shirts. Um, uh, let's see here. Let me get the last couple questions before I sign off. So I've answered this one, Brian Money. Surprised that they talked about Gage hiring a lawyer. I thought they weren't allowed to. Prosecution opened the door earlier. No, the judge ruled with the civil lawsuits. When you're suing a defendant and you have a financial interest in the outcome of a trial, you're allowed to use that as bias in the fact that you hired a lawyer for that. The fact that you hired a criminal defense lawyer is different. Uh, Ramshwar Sharma. How much blame do you think the prosecutor will get if Kyle is found innocent? I do think he will get some blame, but I think the facts will be what most people look at if he's not guilty. Okay, so he said the jury was in the room when they recognized the defense witness. Listen, the fact that he was a vet came out in his testimony anyways. So, I mean, most places did that on Veterans Day if I remember correctly. So I don't know if that was out of character. No, Jayhawker Joe, the prosecution cannot appeal if he's acquitted. Thank you, Chris Wolf. Maybe you were 20K, who knows? That would be cool. Joe, thank you. Brandon Bryant, what do you think? Is he? Thank you, Alana, for being able to join us today. Tia Maria Smith, have you ever tried a politically charged case? If so, was your jury able to rise above their politics and stick to the facts? So we just recently had a politically charged case that was resolved and we have tried one in the past. It was a criminal case. And um, 
I think the jury did a good job of leaving politics out of it. We did lose the trial um, and our client was convicted, but I, I think the jury, we picked a good jury that I think left politics out of it. At least I hope they did. Thank you, Paul K. All right. That's all we got. Thank you guys so much again. Hopefully we're at 20K um, when I sign off of here. Thank you for joining us. If you like this video, go ahead and give us a like for getting to a live. I'll try to do another one. It probably won't be till after my trial. Wish me good luck here. We can talk more about it afterwards. It is going to be a tough one if I'm being honest, but we got to go do it. So um, we will talk later on this week. Um, make sure, yes, hit the like button if you could, um, and join us for more videos. We're going to post our Theranos Elizabeth Holmes trial update tomorrow, which Pete recorded today. Um, and then we'll be back on Thursday with some sort of video. As always, you guys are the best. Thanks for joining me until next time.